Humans Avoid War, Chapter 22, Kylon Point of View. The last official engagement I saw the humans partaking in, they deployed a total of five ships. That was all they needed. This time, they had raised a proper armada, gathering thousands of their finest vessels. Word had been sent to the Federation, informing them of the disaster at the refugee camp, and warning them to prepare for a devourer incursion in case of our failure. However, the Terns opted not to request any military assistance or divulge the species of their plan. No doubt the Speaker's sabotage was still imprinted in their memory. Earth's sudden mobilization, despite their given reasons, no doubt raised some alarms back in the Federation. The two parties deeply mistrusted each other in light of recent events, and I was doubtful that would ever wear off. Hell, even I was frightened of humanity at times. But now, as we worked toward our final confrontation, I was only worried about the humans, especially Rykov. Perhaps I didn't understand human body language, but his posture signaled pain to me. He was huddled over his hollow display, head bowed, his shoulders sagged as though a weight had been placed upon them. Was he truly prepared to do what was necessary? I sidled up to him, nudging him on the arm. Are you alright? You seem like you're having second thoughts. Quite. Don't worry, I won't hesitate. The human sighed, shaking his head. The people at home won't understand what we sacrifice, what we give of ourselves. Perhaps you don't either, General. Dying? Almost dying? Getting shot? I offered. Rykov chuckled bitterly. Beyond that, you don't come back the same person. You have to live with the terrible things you've done, and you just try to convince yourself it was right. It is right. Trillions of lives will be saved. I think there is honor in that, I replied. Perhaps. There are no good choices today, he said. But believe me, I take no pleasure... The ship rocked violently as we were thrown out of hyperspace, on the fringes of the devourer system. I skidded across the floor, groaning as I collided with a metal chair. That hardly seemed like a controlled emergence. It seemed like we had run into a warp-disrupting field. The enemy must have installed some new defenses while we were away. I heard cursing a few lengths away from me and saw Commander Rykov on his knees. It appeared he collided headfirst with a workstation. Grimy red blood was streaming from his nostrils, and his nose was jutting unnaturally off to the side. That definitely was broken, and in my estimation, entailed a considerable amount of pain. I crawled over to the human. You require medical attention. I can oversee. The commander picked himself up, gritting his teeth. It's but a scratch. Soldiers, I want weapons powered up yesterday, shooting anything that moves that isn't one of ours. I limped after him, staring in disbelief. Was he really going to carry on like nothing happened? Humans were tougher than they looked. Sir, we have another problem, an ensign called. It appears that the enemy detached a breaching pod. A boarding party has in infiltrated the ship. My antennae twitched in confusion. Since when do they board ships? I think they have a special hatred for this one, the commander frowned, wiping a fresh stream of blood off his lip. General, we're a little short on foot soldiers. I'd like you to meet up with my security team, the Van Anner, and take care of the welcoming committee. Keep them alive, if possible. Despite several tours on the flagship, I wasn't sure where the main hangar was, but I thought I could figure it out. The last thing I wanted was to look incompetent as the ship's soon-to-be first officer. I gave Rykov a nod, retrieving a plasma rifle from the weapons cart. The gun was much lighter than I remembered, which I attributed to the nanite enhancements. My departure from the bridge was swift, and I hoped that following my instincts would bring me to my destination. 
but after rounding a few corners, it became apparent I was heading in the wrong direction. The covers of pill bottles and syringes suggested that this was a med bay. There, was, there wasn't a physician in sight. Non combatants were probably locked down until the ship was secured. I surveyed the walls, looking for a map. There had to be some sort of directions, somewhere, for evacuation procedures at least. My ears perked as Appa's footsteps echoed down the hall, and I sighed. <clears throat> and I sighed in relief. Perhaps these humans could steer me on the right course. I was about to call out, but then I realized something was off. But those weren't the heavy thuds of Turin boots. Instead, they were a tapping sound, like a raindrop striking a rooftop. I ducked into a doctor's office, peering around a wall. There were five devourer soldiers by my count. Slinking through the hallways, they seemed to be sweeping the premises for any stragglers. I pressed my gun to my chest, trying to steady my breathing. My only hope was to ambush them and take out several before they knew what hit them. The shadows stretched past the doorframe, which suggested they would pass the office in a matter of seconds. My finger found the trigger as soon as they crossed my vision. The plasma around sailed through the lead soldier's forehead, and he crumpled to the ground. Fueled by survival instincts, I charged at the other four in an animalistic frenzy. Before they could shoot back, I tackled another guy and rolled him on the top of me to serve as a shield. His friends opened fire, and I felt his body spasm as it, as it was peppered with rounds. There was a pause as the weapons went on cooldown, and that was the, all the time I needed. Wriggling out from under the corpse, I picked off one of one with a shot to the chest, then turned to my rifle on the second. A volley tore through her neck, and she collapsed in a bloodied heap. Four down, one to go. Theoretically, the last guy should have been the easiest to take out, but the opposite seemed to be true in experience. This one was watching me with sharp eyes and ducked just as I found my aim. My shot whizzed over his head, burying itself harmlessly into the wall. To make matters worse, my rifle buzzed in my hands, indicating that it was on a five second cooldown. Well, shit. His gun was almost recharged at this point, which mean meant I had to act immediately. I closed the distance between us with long strides, jabbing him in the gut with the butt of my rifle. With a sharp exhale, he stumbled backward, dropping his weapon on the floor. I reached for the loose firearm, but my action didn't go unnoticed. He kicked it away and moved toward me. Panic spurred me to swing my rifle at him like a club. Bashing him over the head didn't seem like the worst idea. Well, at least until I actually tried it. His hands shot up in a blur, catching the gun by the barrel. Before I knew it, the weapon had been wrenched out of my grasp. As it clattered to the ground, I realized I was in trouble. Hand-to-hand -hand combat was never my forte, so it wasn't something the Jatari military trained in. With this guy's godlike reflexes, he certainly had the upper hand. I barely raised my fists in time to block a series of punches. While I was trying to parry his strikes, he swept my feet out from under me. Pain shot up my spine as I smacked against cold metal. He sank to my level in a flash, placing me in a headlock. Thrashing about, clawing at his face, none of it seemed to do any good. His grip around my airway only tightened. I could feel my awareness dimming. A burning sensation pulsated through my lungs as my body screamed for oxygen. It was becoming increasingly hard to form coherent thoughts. A shroud of darkness was creeping into my perception. In a few moments, I would slip into its embrace. There was a sickening crunch, which I only faintly registered. My assailant's grip slackened, and I pulled free, gasping for air. An ache lingered in my throat where his arm had been, and I figured I'd have some bruises to show for our encounter. Without intervention, it could have been a lot worse. What were you thinking, engaging a group of them by yourself? 
I glanced up to see Mac. Rykov's security officer, accompanied by a team of 12 others. You were a no-show, and now I see why. I got lost, I spluttered. This ship is a damn maze. Mac paused. I see. Well, I gave your buddy there a good knock upside the head. When he wakes up, he'll be in the brig. Come with me, if you can walk. Uh... Thanks, I owe you one. I struggled to my feet, following after the burly man. Where are we going? The bridge. I figure the boss wants you back. What? I'm sure there are more of them. We have to. There were. Past tense, he growled. Just, uh, look at the scenery as we walk. A series of questions floated through my mind, which I figured were better left unanswered. Was he saying they cleared the entire ship? It couldn't have been more than 15 minutes since I set off on Wyckoff's orders. The meaning of his statement became apparent as we entered the main passage up to the bridge. Bodies were splayed out in the hallway, with blood and brain matter splattered on the walls. One of the corpses had a severed arm shoved down its throat, while another was sawed clean in half. I didn't even want to know. The brutality was revolting. Scenery? I stared around me, dumbfounded. What the fuck, Mac? These guys are slaves. Did you have to butcher them? Rykov said alive, and you... Calm down. These are no slaves. See the brands on their necks? human lowered voice. Your friend Viam warned us about them. They're part of a doomsday cult that worships the AI and wants to help it bring about the end of days. Always on the front lines when they destroy the world. I frowned. Even so, don't you think this is a bit excessive? Not at all. In fact, I wish they suffered more. I fell quiet. Driving pleasure from another being's pain seemed cruel, yet Max spoke as if it were the most normal thing in the world. It was in glimpses of their worst impulses that humanity terrified me. They were always a step away from becoming the monsters they despised. That would be the end of Why Humans Avoid War, Chapter 22. If you liked it, like the video. If you didn't, leave me a comment telling me why. If you've got a full day ahead of you, I hope it goes well. And if you're going to bed soon, then I wish you sweet dreams. Side note, this cold weather now is fucking insane. I'm in Arkansas right now, and it's like negative 20 out right now. And there's no heat in my room. Literally wrapped up in sheets and blankets and my toes are still freezing. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. I hope you're in better circumstances. Ciao.